Our main purpose as sales professionals is to identify the needs of our customers and prospects and bring value to them using our products and services. As you go through PES, you'll hear this many, many times. Now, a big part of being a professional is knowing your stuff. In this module, we'll talk about doing research to prepare for a conversation with customers and prospects. Before you pick up the phone or send an email, there are a few things you should do to make sure you're prepared. Make sure you, one, know your product offerings, two, do some research, three, define your value proposition to that customer or prospect, and four, create an informed situation question. The rest is simply listening to them and figuring out how our offerings can help them with a problem or need that they have. We often say that you should do research before you call, but most of you will face some nerves before making calls, especially in your first few weeks selling. You may be inclined to lean on doing research and logging those as activities, but keep in mind that you'll be losing valuable time if you don't make those calls early on. So remember to start early. We like to say that you should take about three minutes doing research before you call someone. Take one minute to research the company using their website or other online resources, including current events and articles. Take one minute to research the person you plan to call using LinkedIn and other social media platforms or their biographies on the company website. And lastly, take one minute to research past interactions and sales in Salesforce. As a bonus, you can even talk to the PES students who sold to or contacted them in the past. So let's say that after four or five minutes, you've done your research and gotten some good background knowledge. Any more than that isn't necessary unless you are preparing for a presentation or for a key account call. In that case, you'll want to make sure you're very well versed in the entire partnership and history on the account. Let's take a look at this account. From the account detail tab, we can see that this company is a strategic partner. We can also see that under account site, it says no, meaning that this account can only be contacted if you get approved for an account application. For non-partner accounts that say no, you must get written approval on Chatter to contact that account. Since it is a partner or partner prospect account, we know that there will be a key account student assigned to this account this semester. To figure out who that is, we can look at this semester's key account opportunity. So that means we need to look at the opportunity that ends with KA. The key account student for this semester will be listed as the opportunity owner. While you're in the opportunity, you can even look at the notes and attachments or the comments in the activities to see the strategy for this semester. Now, let's go back and look at all the opportunities for this account. In addition to looking at the key account opportunity, we can look at past opportunities for the CRM, APS, DS, and SM classes. At a high level, we can see how many attempts to sell to this account there have been in the past, how many of them have been closed won or closed lost, or even the dollar amounts associated with each opportunity. Let's start by clicking on the most recent closed won CRM opportunity. The opportunity owner is the student who closed the deal. Under product, we can see what they purchased. Under contact role, we can see who the primary contact is and other individuals involved in the sale. And on the activity tab, we can see how the contacts were reached and how many times the student contacted them to close the deal. We can even click into each activity and take a look at the notes. Repeat these steps with any opportunities available to you, and soon you'll have a great picture of what this account's interactions with PES have been in the past.